three hour leap. There, congratulations on the show. Oh, thank you very much. Second season, kind of blowing your mind a little bit, must yeah, be, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I was just saying, I uh, literally just received the first two scripts via email, so I was speed reading at lunchtime there going, what happens? Yeah, yeah. and you can't tell us what happens at all. I die. Uh-huh. Yeah. Oh, no. Yeah. Oh, yeah. no. Sorry. Yeah. That's a terrible way to find yeah. out, isn't but, it? Yeah, uh, but at least, you know, <laughs> on a little bit of time, so uh, not much prep needed there. No, I mean, I can't tell you. I mean, it's obviously... You know, we were going to follow book two right. um, pretty closely, um, but there's a lot. Yeah, there's a lot that happens in season one that kind of it will influence that. Do you feel? Uh, are, were you a fan of the books? Do you feel the need to be slavish to the books, or are, are they different things? As the book and the TV series, they're you know same source material, but they are two separate things. They are. Um, I know that you know stars and. and and Ron wanted to stick closely to the books. However, obviously, you know, books don't always transfer across you know, mm-hmm. directly into episodic TV. But um, some of the storylines obviously altered. We've extended the the Frank Randall line, and uh, there certainly are more episodes in the second part of the season where there are new characters that you haven't seen in the books. Right. But I think it all adds to Diana's world. And and it's funny, um, you know, I always go back to the books, always use them for for detail and guidance. Um, even though you kind of have to take it on board yourself and make it your own, right. it's it's funny how close we've managed to sort of stay within within that world. Because the fans, I interviewed a, a, a number of people for the for the when the show just before it started to air, and we talked about it, and we talked about the fans a great deal. Mm-hmm. And the fans of the book are kind of hardcore; they love the book. Yeah. What's their reaction to you? What are the letters that you get? The emails, the, you know, whatever the reaction on Twitter. Because I read a bunch of it today, yeah, and and it's the it's it, it, it fans. I you gotta love them, right? They they yeah. throw themselves out there, and they are raw yeah. nerves, and they put themselves out in the world. What's your reaction to the to the reaction that you get from fans? It's so it's been so positive, and so you know, sort of supportive as right. well. They've been they're very vocal, as you've probably noticed, yeah. and. Uh, you know, I'm sure if we mess this up, you know, they, they were the first people to let us know, and quite vocally too. But, but yeah, no, it's fantastic. I love that support. And you know, there, there were people outside there this morning when we were doing some taping and, and uh, the morning show, and uh, you know, they're freezing cold, but they're all there and supporting and waving, you know, flags and banners. And um, so it it is fantastic. And we are making it. You know, we're making for them. Um, we're making it for new new fans as well. And. Uh, I'm just pleased that you know we're able to sort of give them what they want, but also yet keep surprising them as well. Can you tell when you're in an airport or you're in a restaurant or something the look in the eye as someone comes towards you? Um, <laughs> it's been because well, it, we've been filming in Scotland. Uh, right. we've said before that we, you know we're kind of in our own bubbles. So um, the show has only just recently aired in, in the UK. So. So there's, there's no recognition there, which is fantastic right. because we can sort of concentrate on the job. And we flew to Comic Con this last year, and uh, this reaction was incredible. You know, doing a big panel, and then I've been in Los Angeles recently, and, and people do recognize you. But on the whole, you know, it's very, it's very genuine, it's very friendly, and they just sort of, sort of sidle up and say, you know, I really enjoy the show, I'm a big fan. And, and, and they, you know, we'll leave you. To do your own thing, but it that that whole thing is very new to me. And, right. uh, they don't want locks of your hair or anything like that. Or <laughs> no, 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 no. And I haven't received any underwear Not yet. yet. Not, Not yet. yet. Yes. Yeah. Well, you kind of, and this takes us just off topic just a little bit. But you did the Batman show for a while, which yes. put you kind of in the world of of yeah. that a little bit. Yeah. Yes. Um, that was, I mean, a terrific job. So different to anything I'd done before. Yeah. I'd done a lot of theatre and. Um, sort of period drama in the UK, been a jobbing actor, and then, you know, to be touring the world in this very uh, high energy, you know, um, doing acrobatics, flying across, you know, stadiums and thousands wow. of people, and and every night, you know, sort of fighting off bad guys. And it was very, um, very strange, but uh, such a great job and yeah. so fun. And I think it gave me a lot of confidence, you know, to stand in front of you know, twenty, thirty thousand people and. And you know, have to fight thirty henchmen every night. You sort of think, well, you know, if it's going to go wrong, it's going to go wrong. And so. the reaction when you come out in that suit, you must get a reaction. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> if you can hear it because of the the cow. But uh, <laughs> it's uh, it was you know an amazing amazing experience. And yeah, I mean, there were mo- the, the most I always remember is you know the first entrance of Batman, sort of flying you know, two hundred feet across the auditorium, and there's people below, and you're looking down down at them, and you just think, wow, this is this is something else. Yeah. 
that's very cool. There's no uh, training for that in theater school. Like Not at school. all. No, no, they don't teach you that on the first day. But um, you know, we went. You know, we went to you know South America and we, went, we did the Staples Center in LA. We did Vegas. Um, we did the whole of Scandinavia and Europe. It was um, it was a real you know a really good adventure. That's very cool. Yeah, that's very cool. Uh, so tell me what Jamie do you do you think? Uh, well, for, one of the things that, that from my reading of the fans, again, I'm sort of really keeping them in mind in this sort of line of questioning. When when I was reading about the fans, what they tell me, they see you as um, a romantic character, but also as a taking care of business kind of character, mm. which seems to be a very potent mix for mm. a lot of people. Mm. And um, one of the things, though, that kept coming up is that the female characters on the show are, uh, I mean, there's a, a, a feminism about the show that seems to have very deep roots in the book and that has been brought forward to the show. Do you see it? I see a very strong female lead character. Yeah. Um, I, I, think, I think all her characters are really strong. You know, I think they're a reflection of Diana Gabaldon. She, if you meet her, she's you know, this sensation. She's super intelligent, very strong-willed, very strong, very witty, mm-hmm. um, very fast-thinking. And I think... Uh, yeah, so all her characters are they're, they're, all of them got shades of darkness and, and grey areas and I think that's what makes the characters so interesting um, I don't think it's feminist in that it's you know, flying a flag it's, yeah. um, it, it shouldn't be anything new that you know, we have a, new, a, a lead female character yeah. but um, you know, if, if people see it in that way that's fantastic that it's getting that sort of recognition yeah. How is it, you mentioned earlier you, you go to the books for reference material to yeah. sort of have another look mm. but uh, the books tell you more about the character than you need to know at, at this point so far you don't know that your wife is from 200 years in the future and that yeah. kind of thing yeah. so uh, how do you separate what you need to know for the character and what you I've talked to a lot of actors who said oh yeah no, I don't read the source material until later yeah it's actually the things that have been interesting are <clears throat> Just small details that, that that maybe you know that he does that you know without sort of you know almost being a, a puppet or something and doing the way he does it, but just sort of finding if there are moments that I can do that the way he smiles, the way he the way he sleeps, whatever you know the way he walks or something or, or a, you know a tick that he's got mm-hmm. and that she does put those details in and, and if I can I try to find a moment, but it's it's always it has to be more organic than just going this is the moment when I right. do that it has to be. Yeah. But I think it is also when, when you come to understand a character as a viewer. Anyway, when I come to understand a viewer, a, a, a character, it's generally speaking uh, stuff that is nonverbal that makes me understand what's going on. I love moments in in movies or on television Science. shows yeah. where they're not saying this is how I feel right now. They show you. It's all about showing me, not telling me. And the little yeah. ticks and the little whatever yeah. are the things that 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 make a character a character. Absolutely, I agree. And I think you know television is very guilty of like telling you mm-hmm. exactly what's just you've just seen happen yeah. or telling you what the characters are thinking and you know silence is great and to communicate through silence and I think that's where you know hopefully you've got that sort of relationship with you know, the other actors or the, these relationships are all happening so whatever they're saying it's like Chekhov or something isn't it right, yeah. like they're all speaking but they're not saying there's something else going on beneath yeah, that there's text. a subtext to there's it there's a subtext and I think you know that's that's what we would like to do with the show. You know, there's a lot of politics played out between the brothers, about Jamie. There's history. That's what's great about having the source materials is that there's a lot of history, the stuff that's happened before we meet these characters, and uh, that's that's all there, and will come to play you know, at various points. Uh, I, sure, I interviewed uh, Simon Curtis earlier today, who directed Woman yes. in Gold. I, I mean, just he, met him. Uh, I was like, oh my god. Yeah, he's a wow. fantastic guy. Yeah, yeah. and. And uh, we were talking about a moment in the movie, and this doesn't give anything away, but uh, Helen Mirren's character plays the niece of the woman who the Gustav Klimt painted the famous painting, mm, and, mm. and it was stolen by the Nazis, and she wants it back. So she hasn't seen it in years and years and years. Mm. And there's a moment where she's at the gallery, and she's about to see it, and they say, okay, it's around the corner. Are you ready? And she says, yes, I am. And then it's silent, her coming around the corner and seeing the painting for the first time in years. And you see this rush on her face of seeing her aunt for the first time in years, seeing this painting for the... And, you know, that... And it is just such a beautiful moment, but there's no dialogue. I was really struck by it later. I had to think, did they tell me anything? Did they say anything? And no. 
not a word was spoken. Yeah, I think you know, I think we need to be brave and, and you know, I mean, we've got some very strong subject matter in, in the last part of the season, very strong, and and you know, there's there is a lot of exposition, a lot of dialogue, but but I think a lot of it is played, you know, in silence as well, and hopefully that those are the most powerful moments. Yeah. yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Yeah.